Hi and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Com Exposed. My name is Eugene Ramirez Mapondera. And my name is Tunuriwa Zambe Makone. And we're here again to bring you all things awesome in the world of African digital arts and tech. This week we're going into a totally different realm where we have not ventured into before and it's pretty exciting. Yeah, we're venturing far, far away from conventional tech and movies and games. We're going to be talking about cars. That's right. Something we've never discussed here. And you're probably wondering, cars, you guys talk about African stuff. How can they be African cars? But uh, lo and behold, yeah. we found one. We found one. Very, very close to home. Now, there have been several brands released here in Africa, but notably in Ghana, coming all the way down. Mm -hmm. Some made it into production, some have not. Yeah. There's about maybe six or so of them. Yeah. But this one we're talking about just came right off the showroom floor, mm -hmm. not more than a couple of weeks back. Yeah. And this is... Mureza. Mureza, yeah. So Mureza was unveiled at the just ended Auto Mechanica trade show in South Africa. This is uh, a vehicle and a brand that is hitting our markets and will be assembled in Botswana, South Africa and Zimbabwe. It's pretty exciting what they have in store for us and it's nice to see this kind of industry kicking off from ground zero. Of course, mm -hmm. there's a lot of assembly plants here in Africa for all brands from Mazda to Toyota mm -hmm. to even Mercedes and so on. You're going to have assembly plants for them and their parts. Yeah. But this is unique in that, number one, Zimbabwe hasn't had a functioning assembly plant of this magnitude in quite some time. Yeah. And I don't think there is anything similar to this that has been running for a while as well in Botswana. That's South true. Africa, maybe. Yeah. But this... This whole project came out of nowhere mm -hmm. and is being headed by a very interesting group of people, most yeah. notably a Tatenda Mgofa, who is the CEO mm -hmm. right from right here in Zimbabwe, and a whole team of other uh, business leaders from the various African countries participating in this project. Yeah, very young uh, Tatenda Mungofa is uh, documented to be just 31 years old, and he's managed to put together this band of Afri young African leaders who make up his organization. So uh, he was just talking about assembly plants and uh, we all know Willow Vale Motor Industries right here in Zimbabwe which shut down quite a while ago. They actually have a plan to resuscitate it by having Mureza vehicles assembled in that plant. That's great news. Very, very great news. It means jobs, it means opportunities, it means industry. And as we've always said, industry is much bigger than just where the thing is manufactured. It touches so many other things from dealerships mm -hmm. right down to painters all the way through to upholstery people. Everything yeah, yeah. is affected by something like this. And it's very, very exciting. Yeah. We have some questions though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into those as we go. So um, during the trade show, they mentioned how assembly will begin initially in South Africa. That is where they want to have the hub of their production, uh, but it will then move on to Botswana where they'll be resuscitating the old Hyundai uh, plant in that country. Then they will resuscitate things right here in Zimbabwe at Willowville. So this will be drop down assembly where they'll be bringing in most of the components and then putting together the final vehicles, which should be available for sale in South Africa this December. They're billing this as a car made in Africa for Africans. So we have both high and semi-lowish expectations. Yeah. The low, maybe we should temper ourselves. We should expect the best. Mm -hmm. But we are cautious yeah. and we wonder what are they up to. Yeah. So the first car they're bringing out is called the Primate. Yes, you heard me say that <laughs> correctly. We need to talk about that for a second. Yeah. Of all the words. Of all the names they could have chosen, they went with primate. It's spelled prime, eight, but pronounced primate. Primate. Like, uh, you know, primates. You learned about them in high school. Yeah, we're thinking chimps and uh, yeah. orangutans already, and that's not great. I feel that was just, uh, <laughs> it, it's just, it was just the marketing team. Who are those guys? You know, it reminds me of this one incident when uh, a certain car manufacturer released a car called the Nova. And in Latin America, Nova actually tra translates to, it doesn't go. So, so it was a marketing disaster right there. But coming back to Primate, it's one of it's, those, it's, it's, it's yeah. just not nice. Yeah. So you're going to have an African car that you're going to make us really push forward and be proud of around the world. And then when we go to talk to our friends in Chicago or whatever, yeah. they're like, oh yeah, I'm driving a Chevy from America and I'm driving a Primate from yeah. Africa. I'm driving uh, the new... Uh, 
monkey edition. Yeah. So <laughs> mine's the gorilla one. Eh? We got you know the gorilla grass is going actually into making windows for cars. Wow. The gorilla grass. Has, maybe we'll have gorilla glass <laughs> on the primate. I but, don't know. But speaking of the primate, it does have some competitive features in it. We're talking your reverse cameras, your satellite navigation. Airbags, airbags. They, they, they definitely <laughs> made an effort, an effort to mention airbags. And um, the range of vehicles will be starting from as low as 180,000 Rand to 200,000 Rand opening price. So that's pretty competitive. Which is pretty good. Yeah. You should have seen a couple of pictures on screen and noticed that this is a four door hatch. So they're definitely going for the entry car owner market and the small compressed vehicle form factor. Yeah. Very good for urban life and for fuel consumption. This yeah. car is coming in a 1.3 and 1.5 litre wow. engine spec, which is particularly good. You're going to have a bit of the strength. It's not like you got a 0.9 engine there. Mm -hmm. You will have some strength and uh, a, not much of a go when you're talking about yeah. takeoff speed. So don't <laughs> expect a 0 to 60 in 0 0.5 seconds kind of Love thing. No, <laughs> definitely not in that range. But efficiency and for town errand running and that sort of thing mm -hmm. should be good. Being a hatch, it should have some pretty decent capacity in the back there. Mm -hmm. uh, four door, good for a small family. Yes. So it's a neat little car yeah. from what it looks like anyway. Yeah, so uh, moving on to sales, it looks like the Moreza's team has decided to move with a very, very unique sales approach. Instead of starting off with franchise dealerships where you just walk into a Moreza dealership and drive off the shop floor, they're going to be using or pre-existing car sales and online avenues for actually selling these vehicles. It's pretty smart. It's pretty smart. It's pretty smart, pretty effective, and it makes business sense. It's exciting to see something like that. I hope that people do tag onto the whole online buying thing. It yeah. might be a bit tricky in countries outside of South Africa. And this is where we get onto the whole made in Africa for Africans thing. Mm. Whenever you say something like that, you've got to cover the entire range of activities that are involved with that. From the sale, like we're talking about the yeah. online sale, how's that going to work in Botswana, in mm. Zambia, in Zimbabwe, all the way through to this is a car meant for Africa. Outside of South Africa and Namibia, yeah. our roads aren't that great. great. Yeah. And um, we may buy a car for the city mm -hmm. and take it all the way home to your rural village and stuff. Yeah. So those sorts of things are the things I'm wondering about. Yeah. They've got this new platform that they created for their vehicles. It's called the X200 Whoa. platform. That, that, that sounds supercharged. It, it sounds supercharged. <laughs> and uh, that's the platform that they're going to be building this and upcoming vehicles. They want yeah. to have SUVs yeah, off this front and trucks. That's right, yeah. So I'm hoping that that chassis, that whole setup, is robust enough to handle the fact that I'm probably not going to change my bearings or my brakes mm. or anything for a long time because I can't afford it. Yeah, but in their defense, if you look at their sales method, and if these guys are going to be selling their cars through pre-existing car sales, they're targeting the market that's already looking for cars that need to be used for the urban setting. Yeah. So they'll be able to compete with those guys looking for used cars and pitch their car as something that can rival that and still be of a high quality, unused and so on. Let's see how it works for them. Yeah, that price point, you are definitely fighting the ex-Jap markets, the whole import market really. Mm -hmm. You may not be getting, uh, what, that, that 1,000, 180,000 mm -hmm. roughly translates to somewhere around eight grand, 10 mm -hmm. grand, somewhere there, mm -hmm. which is about the price you're getting a second hand Mercedes yeah, or something. That's right, yeah. So someone's gonna have to weigh those odds, mm -hmm. get this first hand mm -hmm. car with parts and everything available, mm -hmm. and maybe good uh, maintenance and service plans. Yeah. I hope. Oh, three years. Three year warranty? Three year warranty that's pretty good. Marissa, yeah. Three year warranty. Uh, uh, service plan, please make sure. <laughs> and insurance, let's throw that in there. So. <laughs> You get that, or you're going to get that second-hand car where, I mean, hey, if something goes bust, you're going to go to a lot of trouble to try and fix it. Yeah. So maybe that's who they're talking to and who they hope to meet. Who knows what the future holds? Speaking of future, Mareza has hinted that they will be entering the electric vehicle market by releasing an electric edition, but that's uh, something they've announced, uh, still plans, and I guess that can lead to our next segment where we'll be talking about electric vehicles in Zimbabwe. And we are back and I am joined by Joey K from Electric Driver Africa. Like we said earlier, we're going to be talking about EVs in Zimbabwe. 
So, welcome to the show, Joy. Thanks, thanks. How's it going? It's awesome. Great to have you. Good so, to be here. Uh, <laughs> we've got this exciting thing we're talking about, Mureza, this uh, new brand of vehicle that was uh, announced in September. It's going to be rolling out in December. And they've got these future plans to talk about, uh, to release electric vehicles as far as here in Southern Africa, Zimbabwe. What are your thoughts on that and how practical is it? I think it's a great idea. It's very practical because if you think about it, uh, the normal cars as we know them, the internal combustion engines, mm -hmm. they have like tens of thousands of moving parts. Yeah. They're quite complicated systems. Yeah. And those systems always have to work in harmony. And to do, make that happen is a lot of engineering. Yeah. But with electric cars, they have fewer, fewer moving parts. It's okay. basically a computer mm -hmm. uh, and a battery and wheels. Wow. If we simplify it. Yeah. So there's less, there's less to work with mm -hmm. in terms of what could go wrong. Yeah. So it's pretty practical. And from an engineering point of view, it actually gives us a chance in Africa too leapfrog in terms of technology and actually making cars. It yeah, simplifies yeah. Our, 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 our entry point into manufacturing vehicles. So it's practical and also in terms of um, uh, the core components, mm -hmm. if you look at, let's look at, let's look at Zimbabwe. Yeah. What is in the battery? Uh, most cars use lithium ion batteries. Yeah, yeah. You have lithium, mm -hmm. you have nickel, you have cobalt and you have manganese. If you look around Harare alone, mm -hmm. you've got lithium in, mm -hmm. in acacia, acacia uh -huh. the Harare. Yeah. In Chinui, Karoi, you yeah. have graphite, mm -hmm. which you need as, well as the other cathode, mm -hmm. and you also have nickel in Bindula. All of that is just around Harari. All in our So if backyard. we put all that together, mm -hmm. we can actually be making batteries here. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. So the idea of the vehicle itself is it's concrete. It's great. Yes. But then there's another red herring in the form of infrastructure. How are we going to really sustain a market with these vehicles? Do we have the right kind of infrastructure? Do we have enough charging ports? What's going on there? Are we, are we ready? Or what, what's it looking like in the future? It's, Do you think Mareza could influence that? Yeah, it's your chicken and egg question. What comes first, the car or the chargers? Yeah. But I think it can, it can grow from different angles simultaneously. Uh, some people are thinking, what's the best model? Should it be governments building mm -hmm. this infrastructure, mm -hmm. like utility companies, yeah. or should it be private enterprise? In South Africa, I think they're leaning more towards private enterprise, yeah. leading this infrastructure challenge. But I think it will evolve. Look at telecoms. Mm -hmm. how, how when um, the mobile companies came on, yeah. everything just followed on. It will yeah. evolve like that. Mm -hmm. But as a starting point, we need to look at first principles. What exactly do you need? Yeah. How much energy do you need to charge your car? Yeah, yeah. And if you look at the average um, commute, mm -hmm. how far do you live from here? Uh, five k's. I live exactly. In the city. <laughs> so you don't need like a massive, massive car that yeah. can go three hundred kilometers or five hundred kilometers. Yeah. And for that, uh, in Africa, like in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, right now we're worried about blackouts. Yeah. Power, goes, power only comes back from ten p.m. Mm -hmm and comes back at 5, 5, 5 yeah, p.m. Yeah. But that's enough time. What are you doing between 10 and 5 a.m.? I'm sleeping. Exactly. <laughs> What's your car doing? Oh, it's charging, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so on, on a slow charger, you know more three-pin pump. Yeah. Like, uh, the car takes about eight hours to charge. Okay. So you can do that. And then when the power goes at 5 a.m., you wake up and you drive to work, it's fully charged already. Oh, right. So, so we need to look at uh, the low-hanging fruit. How mm -hmm. do we start? Yeah. 90%, maybe 80% of charging worldwide takes place at home. Mm. Only when people do road trips yeah. and they need the public charging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But for now, most people are worried about how do I go to work, yeah. 20Ks, yeah. there yeah. and back. Yeah. So you can charge at home. And so, then by then, mm -hmm. As we go, as we go, then the infrastructure will be falling in place. All right. So, uh, you know, I'm a young guy. Most people buying these cars are young people and they're, they're worried about the experience. How fast do these cars go? Uh, electric cars are actually faster than normal petrol cars. You're kidding. Think about it this way. Mm -hmm. what, petrol is made of what? Granularly atoms. Uh, yeah, yeah. Electricity is electrons. Electrons uh, move way faster. Okay. So electric cars. What about the wheels, though? <laughs> electric cars they have instant torque. Uh -huh. So they 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 are way faster and they're way uh, they're way cooler. If you check out some of our videos on our channel, mm -hmm. like the Jaguar I Pace, mm -hmm. we did a, uh, a review of it, and then when we were driving and hitting the acceleration, mm -hmm. you can feel it. I mean, like. Wow. Uh, the way it just kicks in. Wow. It's, it's, it's incredible. Wow. They're more fun and they're also more stable because the battery packs lie on the floor. So the center of gravity is quite low. So yeah. they're quite steady. And you don't have that heavy engine like in the case of a, you know. In the front. So yeah. electric cars are like the Tesla Model 3. It's one of the safest cars around. So you have a, 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 a larger crash volume if you, oh. if you are, to, let's say, unfortunately crash into something. Yeah. Yeah. So you're much safer. Wow. Yeah. There's like a wow. bigger crumble zone. Well, remember to check out more content from Joey K and Electric Driver Africa. The links will be in the description below. Thank you so much for, for joining us today, Joey. Thank you for having us. And please don't forget to subscribe. That's right. 
On that note, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us, guys. And remember, if you want to check out more Calm Exposed related content, check out Calm Exposed on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter and visit our website, which is www.comexposed.com. Make sure to subscribe and get that bell rung so that you're always notified of when a new video comes up. Yeah, but for this week, my name's Eugene. And my name is Tino. And remember, believe in yourself.